I've always said that, you know, take any corporation in America, they didn't start out the way that they are today. Right. It took a long period of time yep. uh, to develop into what they are today. Blue Vault's no different. Uh, we started out with one idea, a simple idea. We're going to cover non-traded REITs, and we're going to tell a little bit about their performance metrics, and we're going to uh, keep advisors and broker dealers and asset managers and others in the industry better informed. That was the one singularly focused idea that we had. But we've obviously grown mm. from that point in time. And, and uh, we had to. If we, if we did not adapt, then right. we wouldn't be here today. So Stacy, thank you so much for coming out. I, I am so super excited about this episode. And the reason why is because we're gonna be talking about investing, we're gonna talk about REITs and a lot of things like that. So I wanted to kind of get to know you a little bit. So give me your background. How'd you get started in all this? Ah, uh, okay. Well, thank you for being here, Chris. I appreciate it. Um, I've been in the industry about 23 years. I started in January of uh, 1997. So I joined a firm based out of uh, Norcross called Wells Real Estate Funds. Mm. And I really didn't know what I was getting into when, mm. I, when I joined the firm. I knew it had something to do with real estate and something to do with investing. And I like the, the aspect of both. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's a gentleman by the name of Leo Wells that I had known for a few years. Uh, and uh, that's how I originally got into the industry and uh, I, I learned, uh, I found out that I enjoyed it. Did you like study finance or how, how did you before no, that? You know? I did not study f f uh, finance. Uh, I was a, uh, it's really not what we do, finance is, is technically not it, but mm -hmm. I was a, uh, I had just recently worked for uh, someone at the time who was a former congressman, okay. uh, well, who was a congressman, Saxby Chambliss. Mm -hmm. Uh, was a former U.S. congressman. He later became a senator of Georgia. Mm -hmm. But I was his finance director. That's just a fancy word for helping him raise capital, helping him raise money, sorry, mm -hmm. not capital, mm -hmm. helping him raise money for his re-election. And so uh, that's, uh, that's one of the ways that I had gotten to know uh, Leo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd, got, I'd had an interest in politics, but I didn't want to work in it mm -hmm. uh, any longer. So I left, and, and Leo was one of the first individuals I, I called. So... Um, I remember uh, this, the uh, executive director of Wells uh, told me one day, uh, you know, Stacy, this is really, this is really not, re you know, this is really not real estate. This is more about invest. This is more of the securities industry. Mm -hmm. So I had a, a big learning curve, but that was interesting uh, to me. It was a, a pivot from politics into the securities industry, and that's how it all got started. Mm -hmm. So um, specifically, so let's talk about that. Like, what, what does that look like as, as, as opposed to just like buying a house or like those types of like buying just properties and renting them out? Like, what, what, what is that when you're investing in securities and doing that type of stuff? Uh, well, basically, you go from uh, something that you're managing yourself to mm. professionally managed mm. investing. And so if you want to, uh, if you want to, Put your money in the hands of those who do it on a professional basis. Then you would that that that's that's the the, the leap you're making, especially when it when it comes to real estate. Uh, so a lot of people, yes, they want to buy a house or they want to flip a house or they want to invest in a little self storage or whatever. That's them doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to put your put your trust into those that professionally do this for a living, uh, now you're going to pay some fees for doing that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you're you're typically uh, you're typically going to invest in higher end quality types of assets, uh, and it's going to be professionally managed. So you're trusting others to do that for you. They're better uh, at doing that than you are. Yeah, and it's funny because because I, I used to invest in real estate and 
tenants and toilets are the biggest headaches yeah. that you could possibly have when I'm we're trying interested. to manage it. Yeah, I'm yeah. not interested in that. Yeah, it's like, so, so it, it so big if, headache. It, yeah, and that's, a lot of people don't think that. It's like, oh, I need to get in the real estate game. Let me go yeah. buy a few houses. But there's a lot of things, a lot of headaches that come along with that if you try to do it yourself. And you have to know, you know, you have to have, uh, uh, preferably, you, you need to be able to fix things. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to be the type of person that wants to get the 3 a.m. phone call. Right. Uh, my, my brother, uh, yesterday morning, 6 a.m., received a phone call from a tenant of his, and they had a, a leak in the entire house. Mm -hmm. So he received the call at 6 a.m., and then for the next six or seven hours, he was working on that, uh, trying to help things. I don't want to I don't, I, and I think most investors don't want to deal with that. I certainly don't want to deal with that. Right. So let's let's talk about that, and and you know obviously with with REITs, let's let's talk about exactly what a REIT is and and how that kind of differs from, you know, trying to buy property and manage it yourself. Yeah. So a REIT is a real estate investment trust. Um, it it is uh, basically where you pull an investor's money together, and you're professionally managing uh, commercial, typically commercial real estate on behalf of a a group of investors. Um, there's uh, it, what distinguishes our industry from what most people know about a, the REIT industry is that our uh, the industry we're in is a non-traded. It's an illiquid, not a hundred percent illiquid, but mostly illiquid in, investment. And there's a there's a, a reason for that. Uh, but we call it the non-traded mm -hmm. uh, or un, uh, un uh, non-traded or illiquid investment market. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's not just REITs. There are other alternative investments like BDCs and interval funds and even private equity or private investments. So let's talk about that. What are the differences between those that you just mentioned? Yeah, so it, this all falls up under alternative investments. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there's a lot of other alternative investments, uh, but the ones that we're focused on are the, the REITs, BDCs, business development companies, mm -hmm. interval funds, and the private offerings. Private offerings are very different. Uh, private means that they're not public offerings. They're restricted to the public. Uh, you have to be an accredited investor to invest in those um, because they're riskier or they can be riskier. Um, a non-traded REIT basically is you're pulling uh, an investor's money together or investor's money together to go buy uh, assets that you could not personally buy on your own, you don't have that much money. Mm. Even you and your country club buddies or church buddies or whomever that may be mm. can't do that kind yeah. of thing. So these are high end. Uh, business development companies really act like a, uh, act as a bank. They loan money mm -hmm. instead of uh, taking in money to buy assets. Uh, they loan money to others to do those types of things. Uh, an interval fund is unique uh, in, in that it uh, is, is similar. Uh, but it has a lot more flexibility mm. than a non-trader REIT does in a, in a BDC. And then private equity or private placements, again, uh, the market is, is different than a BDC. There's not typically as much capital raised mm -hmm. uh, by a private offering, uh, but they have become more in favor uh, in the recent years because of some changes in the market. Mm -hmm. So those are the four categories primarily that we are that, we're, that we cover at Blue Vault. Hmm. So how, how does, and, and who does choose the sectors, right? There's, there's different sectors I guess you can invest in, like different like hospitals or you know, what, whatever, and any type of like specific type of buildings or something a REIT covers, who, who selects those and, and what are they? Yeah, well what they are is office, mm -hmm. uh, industrial, mm -hmm. Uh, hospitality, which is hotels. That's what I meant, hospitality, not hospitals. <laughs> yep, yep, hospitality. Yep. Um, Self-storage mm -hmm. is another asset class. Retail, mm -hmm. of course, and then multifamily, which are apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the different asset classes. How, how, do, how do you guys choose, like... Well, of course, we don't choose them. The, the asset managers themselves mm -hmm. select that, and it's typically, I've found, that it's based on what their qualifications are. So they may have a history working in the, uh, in the hospitality uh, asset class. So they may have a history. They, in other words, they know more mm -hmm. about hospitality than they do, uh, do the other asset classes. They know more about office than they do the other. So they feel more comfortable investing someone's money in those. They know, know how it works. They know the, the intricacies about how to uh, maximize profit levels. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's the reason they do. Now there are some who who do what we call di uh, diversified mm. 
uh, investing, and uh, so they're going to dabble in various, and there's something to be said for that. Uh, one industry may be down while the other is, is, is doing better. Mm. Uh, so you're, you don't have all your eggs in one basket. Like a, like a mutual basket. fund type, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, but there's, there's, there's also uh, something to be said for doing what you know and being good at that and mm. driving value there. Mm. That's funny because I always, always say stay in your lane, you know, find the people that, that understand like the experts in the field and go with mm -hmm. them. So if somebody that has a lot of experience in this particular sector, and trust them that you know they're gonna they're gonna be able to manage that piece of the business a lot better than you know somebody that just kind of knows a little bit about yeah, everything. And, and that, that was that that's been tried in the past. Yeah. Uh, a, a, an asset manager was raising a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. uh, they couldn't find assets to to purchase with all that capital uh, in just their asset class, and so they 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 went outside of that that structure. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So let's let's talk a little bit about your company now. So, what what do you guys do, and how do you provi what do you provide your clients, and and how do people work with you generally? So we started a little over ten years ago, two thousand nine. We saw that there was a a gap in the market. Uh, that gap primarily was just a lack of transparency. Uh, so investors would in this the short end version. Investors would invest in, or their money in a REIT, for example, or a limited partnership or a private placement. And they, they really wouldn't know how that investment is doing over time. Now, when you invest in this market, you're investing for the long haul. You're not investing one day and then 10 days later you want to get your money out because that, that can't happen. Right, not like day trading or anything like that. Not like okay. day trading, yep. not, even, not even like what happens in the, within the stock market. Right. Not even what happens with publicly traded REITs. Mm. Um, where you can where you can you know buy a, a, a REIT one day and sell it a month later or sell it a year later, mm -hmm. you can't do that with these. How long is usually the term? Well, it, it's interesting that you ask that because at one point it was three to five years, and then then it became five to seven years, and it's even been known to be seven to ten years. Mm -hmm. But typically, it's it's going to somewhere average somewhere between five and seven years. Mm -hmm. um, so, in this particular market. Uh, an investor and the advisor who also put them in that investment, they just weren't able to really keep up with how the investment was doing. Now, if it was doing very, very poorly, there may not have been anything they could do about it anyway uh, because they can't, it's not liquid, but at least they would know and they, they would have, uh, uh, they, they'd have a comfort level with knowing how. The other thing too is to hold asset managers who invest uh, your money, hold them accountable. Uh, so if, if uh, you don't know a whole lot about it from, from the time you invest till seven years later, there's not a whole lot of ways you could hold them accountable. You, you end up getting angry at the end when it doesn't work out. But if you know how that investment's doing, uh, at least on a quarterly basis, uh, then you can have the, the, the comfort of knowing how your investment's doing, but also hold that asset manager accountable because that asset manager is constantly looking to raise capital and other investments. So the financial advisor, really, it's their job, and there was no way for them to do that. Mm. So uh, Blue Vault began, and we started reporting on these investments, not what the prospectus says that they hope to do or what they uh, anticipate doing, but what they're actually doing. So we call it uh, fact-based performance research mm. is what we were providing. Mm. So the advisor now, for the first time, uh, other than having to depend solely on the wholesaler who would stop in once every three or four or five months to tell them how their, their, uh, their, these funds are doing. They could actually get a Blue Vault report or they could get uh, some sort of information or research from Blue Vault that gave them an indication based on a variety of metrics, mm -hmm. performance metrics, uh, that would keep them better informed about how that investment is doing. And it would uh, give them talking points and questions to ask to help hold that asset manager uh, accountable. Hmm. See, I, and obviously that makes a lot of sense. Transparency, especially when you're, you're dealing with financing stuff, is key. Yeah. And, and the, the, the fact that they could actually see what it's doing right now, not what is hap you know, what right. people are saying it, it's going to happen. Yeah, they would important. say the, 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 uh, the, the industry is known 
as being a higher risk industry. Mm -hmm. Well, really the reason that it's higher risk is because you, you don't know. Yeah. And so you invest your money here, you don't get it back for seven years, mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of unknowns during that time. Whereas if today you bought Coca-Cola stock, if you don't like something, you can sell it wow. tomorrow. You can find out all you want to about how they how they're operating, how right. they're performing today. Right. Uh, you can't do that with a non-traded investment. Nothing wrong with a non-traded. It's just a different animal. Mm. So you have to be aware of the, the pros and cons. Mm. And that's tripped a lot of people up because they weren't aware mm. of what could go wrong. Um, and uh, so in, in some quarters or in some cases, uh, the industry uh, has, and, and in some cases, rightly so, mm -hmm. but they've, we've received our fair share, share of criticism mm -hmm. uh, in the industry, and it, but it's mainly because it's illiquid. It's an illiquid investment. And when someone invests here and they don't know anything about it, and for seven years from now, uh, they get, they get uh, uh, I was going to use a word there, I forgot, but they, they become, they're surprised. Mm -hmm. They're surprised at the end of the day, wait a minute. Uh, I bought this for ten dollars, and I'm only getting nine dollars and fifty cents back. What happened? Mm. And it's just surprising them. So it, it would cause some anger, mm -hmm. and of course there could be some lawsuits along the way. And uh, so the asset manager, it's important the asset manager knows what they're doing, and it's important that the asset manager, as well as a financial advisor, communicates regularly mm -hmm. with their investor. And Blue Vault helps them be able to do that. So these asset managers, they, are they working for Blue Vault, or, or you, how, how does that how does that work? Are they employed with you, or you're no. connecting the investor with these asset managers? Well, really, we don't even do that. The okay. uh, and they don't work for us, and we're not affiliated with them in any way. Mm -hmm. They are simply a third party that manages people's money. Okay. And they all have different strategies. They have different investing strategies, and we we are aware of what those strategies are. We also uh, we, we also keep advisors, primarily advisors, informed about what those investments are. Of course, whenever there's a change, mm -hmm. if there's a significant change, uh, the advisor looks to us to make sure that they uh, are aware of that. Mm -hmm. Not only us, the advisor a lot of times uh, has a broker-dealer they're affiliated with. Mm -hmm. It's the broker-dealer's job also. Broker-dealers have affiliations with third-party due diligence firms. Mm -hmm. So it's not it, it's not solely our job. What, what distinguished Blue Vault was that when Blue Vault came out, we really focused on performance. It, it, that, that's all we cared about. It's the bottom line. How are you performing? We don't care about necessarily care about what the prospectus says that you're going to do because it almost never works out that way. Right. And so we're going to tell you what you're actually doing. Now, because it's illiquid and you don't really know until seven years later, uh, it's you don't know everything, mm -hmm. but you can track some things along the way. Performance is no different than you're driving down the road in your vehicle. You think that vehicle is going to get you from point A to point B. You don't know until you get there. Mm. But along the way, if you hear a, a suspicious sound, mm. that might give you an, an idea that something could be wrong. Mm. It's very, very similar to that. Mm. Interesting. So you're building this company. Let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about building your company and, okay. and the, the journey along the way. What were some of the ups? What were some of the downs? What were some of the things that you learned in, in building this organization? <laughs> well, one of the main things I learned is not very easy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not easy to do. Yeah. Uh, another thing I learned is, is you're going you're gonna to have ups and downs and you, you better be willing and able uh, to withstand those downs. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a long-term, uh, any small business, building mm -hmm. a small businesses. I've always said that, you know, take any corporation in America, they didn't start out the way that they are today. Right. It took a long period of time yep. uh, to develop to, into what they are today. Blue Vault's no different. Uh, we started out with one idea, a simple idea. We're going to cover non-traded REITs, and we're going to tell a little bit about their performance metrics and we're going to uh, keep advisors and broker dealers and asset managers and others in the industry better informed. That was the one singularly focused idea that we had. But we've obviously grown mm. from that point in time. And, and uh, we had to. If we, if we did not adapt, then right. we wouldn't be here today. Ooh, I love that, the, the whole adapting thing. We, we've had to adapt. You yeah. have to be flexible. You yeah. have to, and, it's, and you yes. don't always know. Right. You have to figure it out as you go. It's, uh, 
uh, trial by fire mm-hmm. to some degree. Right. And there were there's been a couple times where I thought uh, I, I don't know how we're gonna make it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, somehow we we do we withstand. So uh, we we serve a lot of investors, a lot of uh, financial advisors, broker dealers in the market today. I think we provide to them. Uh, it's an expanded version of what we've originally began Mm -hmm. 10 years ago, but I think we provide uh, tremendous value to them. Uh, Blue Vault's not the only source that they have to Mm -hmm. be able to track those things, but we're we're a source. Mm -hmm. Uh, So one of the things that, one of the ways that we've expanded is we've gone from covering just non-traded REITs to non-traded BDCs or business development companies. Uh, In 2016, we added uh, interval funds and uh, which is just another alternative investment with a little bit more liquidity. Um, and then uh, most recently we began tracking, doing a better job of tracking private placements. The reason for that is there's more money going into private placements today. Hmm. So the market has broadened and it makes sense for us to go in that direction. Another thing that we did is we, in 2015, we began a, we saw an opportunity to create an annual conference that we call the today the Alts Conference or the Alts Summit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the that summit back in 2015 was just simply where we brought broker dealer and asset manager or product sponsor together uh, for dialogue, what we called back then robust dialogue. And we tried to create that robustness uh, about the dialogue to, to serve the industry better. We felt like if there was better transparency, more transparency, if people were talking about the right things, if, if people were being honest about what we're talking about, that's the robust dialogue we're talking about. I felt like that it would raise the level of the, the industry in general. But most importantly, and I don't want to ever leave this part out, most importantly, it's about the investor. Hmm. So uh, we help product sponsors, asset managers, reach the marketplace, the marketplace being financial advisors. But we're not very enthused at all about helping an asset manager unless they have two criteria at heart, which is they really, really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're credible. Mm -hmm. And number two, they care about the investor. They have to care about the investor. That that's key point right there. That's key. You have to care about your your customer, whoever that person is, and and that's what's going to take your company to the next level. I think so. If 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 uh, if it weren't about that, we don't need to be doing this. Yeah. And uh, that's a genuine, sincere thing. Everybody in the industry says that, mm-hmm. uh, but they're, they're, not everybody means it. Uh, and I've long said that, that, that if, if a company, if an asset manager doesn't care about the investor, I hope Blue Vault helps put them out of business. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there, there, may have been, there may be a couple of examples of that along the way. So you have to care about it. If you think about it in these terms, uh, a, a, a couple, a man and woman, have uh, invested their hard-earned money mm-hmm. for 50 years. They're now 80 years old. They entrust someone to manage that money for them. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal. Mm-hmm. It's very serious. So you have to care about enough about that investor. That doesn't mean you're, you're not going to ever invest in something that's not going to lose money. That happens every day. That's called risk. Right. We're okay with that. Yep. Okay. But, but it's okay to lose, some, it's not okay. It's okay to lose someone's money if you did everything you could do and it just didn't work out. But it's a whole different ball game if you don't really care mm-hmm. or, you, or you care more about the commission you earn or right. the fees that you right. earn. So you, co- you will compensate, yep. but that 80 year old couple lost their money and that, yeah. or lost 20% of their money. Right. That, so by the way, that's gonna happen mm-hmm. by Good, honest, decent people. You hit you hit the nail on your head, like you know. And I say this, you know, when I'm training sales reps and stuff like that too. You don't focus on your pocket. You don't focus on your commission or what you're making. Focus on how you're going to help that person because that's going to make a better customer. It's going to make a long-lasting relationship when you're focused on their best interests, not your own. And I think that's key. And and most companies that are structured that way, and most most people in the sales capacity that are structured that way, are going to have a lot better rela- client relationship when they structure that way. Yeah, a- absolutely. It's, it's crucial. And and again, uh, the industry, 
and look, we're just human, okay? Mm -hmm. We're doing the best we can do Sticks for the happen. most part. Yeah, Things happen. are going to happen, yep. and uh, you know, people are going to be thinking about their own pocketbook. But right. you, what you can't do is you can't make a decision yes. uh, for you uh, that's going to negatively impact the investor right. because the investor entrusted you. You're a steward of their money. Mm. And, and uh, I think that our industry is, is loaded, is full of asset managers who do care. Mm -hmm. Now, they want to make money too. I get it. Sure. They got a lot of employees to pay. Yep. Um, and they have an expertise. Uh, they can do things that others can't. Mm -hmm. So great, put it to work, mm -hmm. but don't forget that investor. It's very, very important. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the reasons I didn't go back to the, the history. One of the reasons that Blue Vault, we started Blue Vault. Mm -hmm. And I started that with, I had a partner that I bought out in 2015. Uh, but she and I started the company together with that singular mission in mind uh, to protect the investor. And the reason, and I know that sounds a little weird, but the reason is we worked for an asset manager that they had good intentions, but it, we raised a lot of money and it didn't work out. Not, it didn't work out, the, it wasn't disastrous, mm -hmm. but it didn't work out like we said it was gonna work out or what, the way we wanted. So we communicated right. to the advisor that it was gonna work out this way and it didn't work out that way. And so, we looked around, my partner and I, we looked around and we noticed that th that's not an anomaly. Mm -hmm. th this happens too often. So what can we do about that? So we felt like that there was a, an opportunity uh, to do something about that. And that's the reason we started Blue Vault. We, we felt like there was, a, that, there was that gap mm -hmm. and we, we, we worked to fill that void. And it's so important. What you just said is essentially your company's why. Like why you do what you do. And it was that event that you and your partner realized, hey, there's got to be a better way and we can, let's, let's build on this reason why yeah. to build a strong foundation for building a company. Yeah, the, you know, it's interesting, the, the irony yeah. of that story I just told you is that this portfolio was filled with the absolute best office properties a, per, uh, a company could purchase mm -hmm. all over the country. It was well diversified. These were buildings that were four stories all the way up to 90 stories in size. Uh, the best class A office buildings, assets you could purchase. Mm -hmm. and, and the irony is, is that even though that happened, it still didn't, didn't work out. I'm not trying to be too critical of that company because they, we did the best we could, uh, but there's, there's something that was missing. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know that we, that we know exactly what that is. I mean, there are things you can point to, but the point is, you, there's a lot that goes into creating a good, solid portfolio that's gonna perform for an investor. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, it's not just about going and buying great assets. Yeah. There's more to it. That's awesome. So we get a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, people that watch the show. If you were to give one piece of advice to those uh, those entrepreneurs, those business people, maybe those investors, what would that be? Well, I can only talk based on personal experience. Uh, for, for the entrepreneur, I'd say, you know, yes, follow your dreams. Uh, you have a story to tell. Uh, you have an expertise in something. Uh, I, I would say that uh, it, it, it's not easy. It, it's going to be difficult. I'd say surround, your, surround yourself with people it's crucial that you hire the right people, that you surround yourself with people really who know more than you do. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that is key, but also the attributes of uh, loyalty, high character, dependability, uh, I think that's crucial. You, you, what you're doing is you're, you are um, increasing, the, increasing the, um, the possibility that your company is gonna be a success if you surround yourself with good people. We've done that. We've been very fortunate to be able to attract and, and hire, and today we have a team that is uh, phenomenal, exceptional, but the character of the team. Yeah. Uh, so I can't do, and, and as an entrepreneur, you're not gonna be able to do everything by yourself. It's just not possible. Right. Uh, right. So that's why you need a good team. I would say persistence is key. Uh, there's gonna be days where you you don't feel like keep you, you, you're not going to feel like continuing, uh, staying focused, stay, moving forward, um, but you have to have that commitment somewhere 
uh, deep down uh, that says, no, even though I don't feel like it, I've got to keep pushing forward. That's one of the things yeah. I would say as an, I, for, to an entrepreneur. Yeah. Now, well, maybe I'd say something different to an investor. No, but that's great. Having, having a great team around you builds a good, solid company. A company is yep. made of people. It's not one person. And consistency, uh, hitting the nail on the head. Keep, keep, uh, keep consistent, and you'll be able to build something great. Well, you built something great here, and I really appreciate, Stacy that you're sharing with us. So uh, thanks for coming out. Thank I really you, appreciate Chris. it. Appreciate you yep. coming out. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into the episode. If you guys enjoyed it, show some love, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. Also, make sure you check out our exclusive C-Level group on Facebook.